there. You're too smart. You're just too smart. Let's show them how you ride. She's up, she's on, she's gonna peel out, and look at that chicken go. Burning rubber all the way across the table. Good job, Martha. After she finishes her bike ride, she loves to go down to the local ice hockey rink where she can do a little bit of ice skating. Now, you might remember her from the 1988 Winter Olympics. Here's a little bit of her routine for you now. And here we have the beautiful and the graceful Martha who is now going to attempt a world-famous half-turn. Yes, there it is, beautifully and gracefully executed by Martha. This next trick has a 9.3 degree of difficulty. You may remember she fell during the Winter Nationals. And here it is, ladies and gentlemen. It's a lovely full turn, completed live, right here at Bush Gardens. How about a big round of applause for our very lovely Peggy Flamingo. Here you go, Martha, let's dance, kid. All right, there's a twist to the left. Keep it up, Martha. All righty, a little twist to the right, maybe. Yeah, we're doing the funky chicken here today, folks. Okay, hop down here, Martha. Hop to your head, jump. Burn up the dance floor. Here we go, all the way down here, Martha. Dance. Watch it now. Hey, Harold is 30 years old. He's a green wing macaw native to Mexico, and he is definitely the class clown of the bunch. Is that true, pal? Oh, yeah. Hey, Harold, can you say hello? Okay. Now, he also does some fine impressions, and one of his best is a dog. I think his dog sounds like a poodle gargling. Bark like a dog. <laughs> rah, rah. <laughs> what I tell you? Harold, be a pal. Come here and give me a big kiss right on the nose. Thanks. How about a hug, too? Aww. <laughs> I think he's milking me for seeds, actually. Harold, be polite. Tell everybody your name. Harold. <laughs> Sounds like he's from New Jersey, doesn't he? Anybody out here from New Jersey? There's a couple of folks. Anybody have relatives like this at home? I think we all have a relative like this somewhere in the family. Actually, Harold's from California, and out there they love to do some skateboarding. We got him his own little bird-sized skateboard. Let's see how you ride, pal. All right. Hop on there. There we go. Smooth as silk sliding down the boardwalk. A totally gnarly radical surf dude he is. Okay. Harold works up an appetite doing some skateboarding. He also likes to have a drink. His favorite is sunflower seed punch. What do you mean, no? You haven't been sneaking this stuff, have you? That's good. Take a little sip, pal. But I don't want you to drink too much, because, Harold, you've got a lot of tricks. <laughs> What are you doing, pal? I said take a sip. Give me that bottle. Harold, give me the, give me the bottle, Harold. Oh, Harold, please, don't embarrass me now. Oh, no, look at this, folks. And it's only Tuesday afternoon. How about that crazy bird? Yeah! You can, okay. I guess we're going to see it right now. This should be it, folks. Here is the world-famous Harold Headstand. Told you he wouldn't do it. <laughs> should we give him a second chance? Come here, pal. Get on my hand here. We do want to give him a second chance, right? Are you going to do it this time? You are. Sure. <laughs> this should be it, folks. This is the world famous Harold Headstand. Close enough, a head roll. <laughs> Needs these little leg extenders to do a headstand on a table, though. Harold's not only a great roller skater, he loves all sports. And you know what his favorite sport is? Basketball. So we made him a bird sized backboard. Got him a beak-sized bird basketball. There's the tip-off. Hurry up, Harold. Yeah, there's some hustle. All right, let's cheer on Harold to the hoop. He's got a long way to go to make the winning shot. A little green cheerleader up front. Hey, Harold, what are you doing, pal? You can't stop and start like that. Hey, wait a minute now. Wait, there's something wrong here. You can't travel like that in basketball. You got to dribble like the pros, remember? <laughs> Dribbling will keep you from getting penalties. Here he goes up for the shot. It's up. It's a fake. He's going to slam dunk. He's looking for the open lane. It's up. Doesn't
doesn't want a penalty for sure. There we go, pal. Ready? How about dropping it right in there? Any day now. There is a 30-second shot clock in basketball. Oh, a big fake. He's up. It's up again. It's in there. Two points. All right. Great. Well, hi! Too busy eating a seed to talk to me, huh? So what's your name? Lolita. What's your name? Lolita. Lolita, right. Hi. Hi. What you doing? What am I doing? I'm trying to do a bird show, remember? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Hmm. <laughs> this little gal here can do some fine impressions. This first one's a little bit scary, though. Can you do a ghost? Ah. Scary ghost, huh? She also likes to do a kitty cat impression. Here, kitty, 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 kitty. Meow. Meow. Not a bad kitty cat, huh? You know, it took me all afternoon to stuff the little cat into a parrot suit. <laughs> you like bad jokes, huh? Yeah. That's why she likes this show a lot. And she's not only a great impressionist, she's a fine singer as well. And she'll tell you, are you a good singer? Yeah, okay, we're gonna find out by singing a couple of scales. Here we go. You ready to sing? Ah, 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 ah. Okay, I think she's in tune now. Hey, Lolita, sing your favorite song. Let's see, how about singing, Oh, What a Beautiful Morning? Oh, what a beautiful morning! Oh, what a beautiful morning! I've got this beautiful feeling. Everything going like that. There's the singing bird, folks, the one and only Lolita. She appreciates it very much. The last and final stunt of the show is this. We're going to send her flying right up the stairs to you, ma'am, in the white. She's like, oh, no. <laughs> you don't have to kiss a bird. Just stand up and tell everybody your name. Oh, okay, yeah, that's a good excuse to get out of this. You want to help me out, sir? Pick up that hoop that's sitting right there on the fence. What's your name, sir? Russ. Russ. Everybody say hello to Russ. <laughs> All right. Yeah, perfect. You've done this before, haven't you? Fifi's going to fly right up these stairs, right through that hoop, and right into Russ's mouth. <laughs> right over the head, sir. There we go. Going to go right through Russ's hoop. Cross the back of the theater, missing your heads by about that far, if you're lucky. <laughs> Picking up purses, expensive sunglasses, and cameras all the way to that second hoop held by Walt, our employee of the month. <laughs> they go right through Walt's hoop and then swoop through the reserved section. <laughs> it's for my family. Landing right on my shoulder, I hope. Now I have to ask everyone to please remain seated while Fifi's in flight. And here's the most important part of this trick. When she's flying overhead and you guys are looking up in the air, <laughs> keep your mouth closed. Exactly. <laughs> ask her. <laughs> you ready, Fifi? Here we how can Fifi's going? <laughs> <laughs> ready? Kiss for luck. There's the hoop. Go for it. There's one. Harold has one more impression. Ladies and gentlemen, the Anheuser Bush Eagle. I hope you all enjoy the show as much as I enjoyed bringing it to you. Have a great afternoon. See ya!
bunch of lazy bones I have around here. Come on, Tannen, wake up, boy. Ah, oh, yes. Well, good afternoon, Elixir. Tallinn, come on, boy, wake up. I have a surprise for you. Come on, Tallinn. Let's do some tricks for the nice audience. Sit up. Run over! Play dead. I taught him that myself. Rimshot! Fair ladies and noble gold! Ah, uh, yes, it. We are not well versed around here as to what it is. But one thing's for certain. I've learned to stay off its grating. Now, where was I? Ah, uh, yes, let us begin. Rimshot! Fair ladies, noble lords, and children of the Shire, I welcome you to the alchemical laboratory of Nostromos, the royal magician and soothsayer. But first, before we say this suit, this laboratory you see before you will enchant and amaze you beyond your wildest dreams. Dutifully orchestrated by me. Northrop the Magnificent. All right, Northrop the Apprentice. Oh, this is my favorite part. This is where the Stromos lets me do some of the magic. Siempre cuando llego mi noche, cubache de un bete cato. Here in this mighty laboratory, the Stromos will unfold the story of ages past. And he just heads to you, his noble audience. But first, the burden I must share, as his apprentice extraordinaire, with great pride and immense care, this hallowed room I now prepare. Illusions! Turn me back to days of yore. There's no ending once in short. Ha, 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 ha. This drum was mystical. Magical, mythical. Your audience awaits you, and I, your most humble of servants, have readied your chamber, as usual. For it is plain to see that I... Oh dear. For it is plain to see that I've been talking to myself. Enjoying the conversation, Northman. <laughs> yes, sir. Don't be hard on the boy. Well, what are we to do now, Eleanor? I uh, don't know exactly. This has never happened before. Oh, wait. A message. A magical message appears before us. Northrop! Sire! Thou art a blithering idiot! Oh, what kind of talk is that? Oh, old English, I believe. Yes. I have been summoned to the royal court. I gave the queen a potion to take off ten years. But her five-year-old daughter drank it by mistake, making her minus one. Oh, dear. Therefore, I will be late. Yes? Do, do not repeat. Not allow any people into the land. Oh, not one person, sire. Helen said there will be no demonstration today. What? Repeat. No. Sire, wait. Your chamber is ready. The people have been gathered. Sire, wait. Eleanor, what are we to do now? Well, boy, you really have no choice. No has spoken. Inform these people that they must leave immediately. Oh, but Eleanor, we can't do that. You see, I promise these people they see iron turned into gold. We've got to do something. Of course, that's it. What? what? Me, Northrop the Magnificent. <laughs> yes, yes, Northrop the... Uh, no, no, Northrop, you're much too inexperienced for such things. Well, but, Pelinor, this is my big chance. Why, I can do anything as Dramos can. Trust me, I'll keep it simple. Come simple minds, come simple tricks. Oh, what are you, a mockingbird? I don't you and why don't you play stuff for the winter? He's touching it. There's no point in arguing. Northrop, if you promise only to perform simple illusions, yes. spells that you understand, oh, I, promise. I think a short demonstration of magic will be fine. Huh. Uh, Nostromus is not going to like this. 
Yes. But Elixir, what harm can it do? Well, I'll perform the very first illusion in the Strong of Seven. <laughs> it's a very sorry. I didn't mean to walk across your great deal. I was just about When I said I was sorry, now shh! Thank you. Now, I'm going to need two volunteers for this next trick. What about you and you and all the lady up come right up here, on the stage, stand on each side of me, turn around and face the audience. And tell me, what might your names be? Shelley. Shelley and you, my lord. Okay. Oh, what fine names. Tell me where you're traveling from, some neighboring county, some far off distant land. Far off, and where might that be, my lady? New Hampshire. New Hampshire, well, that's a fine place. Never been there, though. So, well, I've never been anywhere but here before. Yeah, and Shirley? Shelley. Shelley, okay, I have a very special favor for you. I need you to take a hold of this wand. Now, this is Nostromo's most favorite wand, so you will take care of it for me, right? Very good. Now take a firm hold of that. Now burn it. What have you done? You ever seen the likes of this before? Do you have a hundred pounds to pay for this, my lady? Oh, well, there's a high price to pay for breaking a great sorcerer's wand. Who do you suppose is going to pay that price? Oh, well, let me see if I can't fix it first myself, though. Oh, there we go. Now, Shelly, I'm going to give you one more chance. You promise me you won't break it this time. Okay, very good. Now, take a hold of that number. What? Where did it go? Oh, that aunt's a saucy girl. Are you trying to upstage me, my lady? Oh, well, let's try something or something you can't break. Where the basket? If you would take a hold of the basket. Now, Bernie, if you come right over this way. Okay, perfect. Now, put your feet together. Good. Right on top of the trap door. Now, Shelly, if you come this way, holy kitty, if you come over this way, watch out for it in there. Stand next to my friend, Elixir. Elixir, watch her. She breaks things. Now, Bernie, as is the custom of Castle Hastings, when a woman commits a crime like breaking a great sorcerer's wand, and is perchance accompanied by a strong, chivalrous lad as yourself, well, it is the gentleman who must nobly pay the consequences. So, Bernie, if you would come right over this way, kneel down on the pillow and put your head and arms into the stocks. Perfect. And if you could do me a favor, could you pull your shirt sleeves up just that bit there? Okay, that's perfect. Okay, and look all the way to the floor. Okay, you can relax a little. And Bernie, just if you have any case and thoughts of escaping, I'm going to secure you in like this. Now, Bernie, don't move. I'll be right back. Shelly, have one more favor to come right back over here again. Watch out for it, man. I need for you to sit right over here on this top step. Now, Bernie, you have nothing to fear, for I have perfected a spell which renders a human being impervious to this blade. However, there are a few minor details which escape me at the moment. Oh, dear. Oh, but not to worry. Oh, my memory usually says me well in a... We shan't have a bit of trouble. Shelley, how about if we take that basket and place it right here, thusly, under Bernie's head? Just in case. And Shelley, did you see that apple in the basket? You can take it out and place it right here in this opening for me, please. Perfect. Okay. Believe that's everything. Lords and ladies, are you ready? He's the one in the stocks, not you. Now, are you ready? And Shelley, are you ready? No. You <laughs> and that's Benelli's Bernie, are you ready? Uh-huh. Rim shot. One, two, three. And there we have it. Let's have a round of applause for our brave volunteers, Shelley and Bernie. Thank you both very, very much for being able to sit together. Oh, how would you like to be one of these? <laughs> Enough of this, Northrop. You simply do not have the knowledge. Oh, but Pelina, all the knowledge I need is in that book. And why I've seen Astrama Stewart on several occasions. Now, what should I turn to gold? Oh, tempting. Too big? No. <laughs> the suit of armor, Pelly. Northrop! I'll use the suit of armor. 
very taught to chrono beast smallest. Wrong word, Northrop. Wrong word. Oh, 
Oh, Penny Elixir, did you see me? I did it! Well, I was flying! It's certainly been an educational experience, wouldn't you say? Oh, I'd say. I learned I do have the power to turn iron into gold. Good! You've learned what? And yeah, that power has nothing to do with it! Heavens! What is it you're looking for now? The last chapter in this book. The chapter of forbidden spells? Orthrum! Don't Pelly, you listen! That? To remedy a spelly vogue, and yielding power from the cloak. Of course, his power comes from his cloak. You cannot control the power of the rogue. You must stop all this before it is too late. Oh, this is great. Uh, and it's a perfect fit. Siempre, Trombachi, Tatu. in right now, but if you please leave the message, I'd rather get what back to you. What have you been doing, boy? Nothing, sir. Arthur? Uh, almost nothing. Tell me the truth, boy! Well, uh, you see, it was like this, sir. It was the bird. The I... truth! Yes, sir, I was just getting to the truth. You see, I looked in your book of forbidden spares, and I put on your magic cloak. And I boasted that I was a great magician. And I'm not fit to be an apprentice, let alone a great wizard. I'm sorry, Master. I'll get my things to be on my way. Talon. Talon, please don't cry, boy. It'll be all right. I'm sorry. Talon, take good care of your petty elixir, won't you, boy? You're the best friend I've ever had. And don't miss you all. Arthur, by telling the truth, you have taken the first step toward becoming a great wizard. You have learned that the greatest power is truth, and the greatest magic is belief in oneself. Does this mean I can say? If you will promise to perform only those illusions you understand. I promise anything possible. All right, then. Clean up this mess. Make your guests farewell, and be sure to invite them back to the enchanted laboratory of Nostromos the Magnificent! <laughs> Anything is possible.
Eleanor, Elixir, Talon. And of course, it, we thank you very much, lords and ladies. We bid you a good day and a fond farewell. Planting cellars which are not visible from our tour gallery. From the primary fermenting tanks, our beers go into the lagering cellars for further each 75,000 gallons. Each amount can measure into the exact quantities required for growing each brand. Next, the mash is strained and an amber liquid called wort is drawn off. Beer areas for packaging. As you enter the packaging area, please turn right, being in size up to 2,000 barrels each. Third, reaching the consumer. The convertible can fillers that are visible from the tour of the pasteurization process, cans pass by the automatic level detectors, which eject any cans that are improperly filled, visible from the tour gallery. The convertible can fillers that are visible from the tour gallery have the capability to operate at the rate of 2,400 cans per minute. All four lines will fill open. The draft beers produced here daily are not pasteurized. Caps. Caps. That's a huge What's the caps? The convertible can fillers that are visible from the tour gallery have the capability to operate at the rate of 2,400 cans per minute. All four lines will fill open. Machine supply our distinctive labels. Automatically lower the bottle. Three of which are visible from the tour gallery. The convertible can fillers that are visible are automatically removed from their pallet at the extreme right of this row and then conveyed to the rinsers and into the can fillers. How does it smell right now? It smells like soggy 